What's up everyone and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. Rivian stock just reported earnings and it is going crazy in after hours. The market had a decent day today, but we do have some pretty important news, especially with inflation and some big banks because the market is still... Uh, a little weak right now to say the least but before we get started let us know what stocks you are watching in the comments down in the comments down below and there's a good chance we cover them in tomorrow's video but tom let's get right into it yeah mike the first thing i want to talk about tonight is the big earnings that we saw come out we can see that rivian is tanking down here in after hours mike they're all the way down to 3675 and you know we just saw lucid report earnings last week and lucid also ended up tanking off in a pretty big way so to see rivian go down is not too surprising but they came in with some pretty bad numbers mike they actually be uh lost on their eps they came in at a negative 2.43 versus a negative 1.97 estimate there and they missed on sales coming in about $6 million under the estimate. So it's definitely bad news there. And Mike, they only delivered 909 vehicles in, in Q4, which is uh, which is not good by any means. So Rivian is going down big time in after hours, down to 36.75, like I said, at the low. And I would not be surprised if this one continued down. For sure. And just to remind everyone, like Tom, if we zoom out a little bit, like on a daily chart, Rivian was one of those hyped up electric vehicle stocks. And while Rivian might produce some pretty cool looking vehicles, that doesn't mean their stock price necessarily will continue up. And that doesn't necessarily mean that Rivian is worth the valuation that it's trading at. Just back a couple months ago, Tom, this stock was trading for like $170 a share. And I remember we were uh, we were hating on it pretty, pretty big when it was at like 170. And to see it fall down all the way down to like 37 is pretty crazy. But just like you said, Tom, the earnings were not the best with Rivian. They missed on their sales and their earnings per share. So it was pretty rough. And they're just having like a problem producing their vehicles. They have like 83,000 pre-orders for their R1 vehicle as of March 8th. And then they only produce a total of 2,425 vehicles. That's bad. Yeah, that's pretty bad numbers. Like you said, their their vehicles look awesome. You know, they do a great job marketing as well. They're they're really uh keeping their names up there in the headlines and everything like that. But whenever you start looking at those production numbers, Mike, to only have a total production of love right around 2425 vehicles to me that's just like nothing um you know they need to really up those numbers and in q4 they did produce 909 which is good so you know if they did uh go all year at the rate of like 909 vehicles per quarter they would end up doing pretty decent or they'll they'll come in higher than 2400 at the end of this year but i mean it's still bad to see that production that low and we just saw lucid also have bad production numbers whenever they reported earnings. So it seems like these new EV companies are having a lot of problems getting going and they're obviously struggling to keep their costs low early on. Yeah, exactly. And just like something really important to keep in mind is like, you know, whether Rivian has 83,000 pre-orders for their R1 vehicle or they have 183,000 pre-orders, if they can't produce vehicles in an efficient and profitable way, it doesn't matter. So it's just something really important to keep in mind with this one. We can see it is tanking down in after hours right now. So Tom, like what levels do you have for us in terms of like the stock with this one? Yeah, this one's tough. I mean, they are at the lowest level they've been at since they came on the market. So as they go down, we're, it's going to be tough to gauge. But I would say look at whole dollar amounts with them. You know, as they start to fall, I up $35. If they move below that, then look at $30 below that. You can see uh, this week, actually, if we look at the five minute chart, Rivian was consolidating quite a bit right at $40. So it seems like these uh, whole dollar levels do end up playing out pretty well. So $35 and then 40 or and then $30 below that will be the main levels I'm looking at. If Rivian does start popping back, they're going to have one uh, heck of a time breaking back above $40. Like I said, they had a few bounces there earlier this week. Right, good to know. And then again, in the EV slash electric sector, uh, we had Blink report earnings today, and those are not doing too well either. What's going on with this one? 
Yeah, they're actually not doing good either, Mike. They are falling down a pretty big way, falling all the way down to 23.19 in after hours, but they also lost on their EPS, came in at negative 0.45 versus a negative 0.39 estimate. So that was a bad loss on that. Um, but the news, the good news was that their sales uh, came in at 7.95 million versus an estimate of 5.4 million. So to see them come in with, with sales better than expected, Mike, that's good to see. But whenever you have the EPS down, that's obviously not good. And, you know, we can see that there's actually a pretty nice uh, deal that, that Blink had with GM earlier this year where they announced they were going to be supplying uh, EV chargers at GM dealerships all across North America. So I thought that was good news for them. But obviously their stock is not doing too well here in after hours, Mike. And looking at the company overall, you know, they had a, they did beat on those sales estimates, but they seem pretty low, Mike. To only have seven point nine five million dollars in sales is definitely not a lot. Yeah, it's pretty weak. So we'll see what happens with it, though. Uh, Tom, looking at the market overall today, it was kind of a roller coaster. What would you say are like the most important levels we have heading into tomorrow? Yeah, yesterday, Mike, we talked a lot about four twenty eight and four twenty seven as being some nice levels to look at, and you know, four twenty seven I think is still going to be a pretty good upper resistance level. So as the spy tries to move up here, um, definitely I have four twenty seven, then four twenty eight after that. Um, if we break that, I see four thirty two possibly uh, to the upside there. So hopefully the spy keeps up, Mike. It had a pretty good move today, especially at the end of the day, back up early on though. It was looking pretty scary as the spy started selling off, but we ended up recovering right back up and there wasn't any like major news. I don't think that really made the market rip up, but Hey, the spy ended up holding up and I'm really happy to see it come back. I know a lot of people have been making jokes lately that, you know, if the spy is down early in the morning, you can almost guarantee it's going to end up green by the end of the day. And Hey, we almost got there today. True. We were close. Um, I know that inflation data came out earlier this morning, which was kind of rough. We had the CPI report and, you know, it came in at around like 7.9%, which it hurts. And then I know like uh, Dow Jones was only expecting it to come in at around 7.8%, but still like it's pretty high. Yeah, that's really high, Mike. And it, like like they say on this article here, the highest in more than 40 years. So that's crazy. I know the core inflation came in right at the expectation, but still, I mean, it's, it's just insane to see these things continuing to just fly up here. I know that at some point, people are going to start getting pretty angry, Mike. I know that lately people have been so upset that the price of gas is getting so high. I know that gasoline futures have been uh, flying to the upside over the past few weeks. Today, of course, they dip back down. But in general, I feel like just inflation and just people paying more for everything is just going to have a negative effect on the economy. And I feel like that uh, we're starting to see that with stocks here over the past month. And I feel like the inflation problem is only going to get worse, unfortunately, you know, with gas prices moving the way they are and even commodities moving the way they are, whether you're looking at soybeans, corn, wheat, or basically anything else, it's all rising. Like even fertilizer prices are rising in, in just a crazy way. Yeah, they are. And I actually saw some good uh, news for those potash stocks today, Mike. I know there was some crazy news that came out of Ukraine and we can see that uh, Mosaic is up 7.74%. I know there was some news with uh, banning like Russian fertilizer and stuff like that. So that's going to be very interesting. MOS is flying. IPI is continuing to make new daily highs. I mean, they had a nice 6.8% day. So yeah, these potash plays are on fire. Yep. All right, Tom. And then I also know there was some news with like Russia and banks and Goldman Sachs. So what's going on there? Yeah, more uh, more companies are boycotting Russia. It looks like this morning we had news that Goldman Sachs was shuttering their uh, Russia business, which is not good to see. JP Morgan came out today and said that they're winding down their Russia operations. So we're definitely seeing more companies just continue to pile on onto this boycott, Mike. I know that Earlier in the week, we saw McDonald's do this along with uh, Intel, AMD, and a lot of other companies over the past few weeks. So definitely interesting with that. The banks didn't really have too much good movement, though, today. I will say JP Morgan held its ground, but all day long, it just really didn't uh, didn't do anything. It honestly uh, just was more flat than anything. And Goldman uh, didn't really do much either, just slowly sold off to the downside until the end of the day. Gotcha. And then we can't forget about Amazon, Tom. Amazon is up 5.4% today, 
But I know that there was news that came out that Amazon is doing a 20 for one stock split and they're buying back around $10 billion worth of their shares. So that's pretty big. I actually made a video dedicated to this Amazon this Amazon stock split earlier today. Uh, feel free to check that out. Guys, please keep this in mind. Stock splits do not change anything about the value of the company. The only thing it'll do is it'll take the Amazon share price, it'll divide it by 20, and then it will multiply the shares outstanding by 20. The valuation will stay exactly the same, but hey, the stock's moving. Yeah, it's really going up in a big way. And I know a lot of people, Mike, love to jump into these companies as these splits start to happen, whether it's uh like whether it's the share price getting lower or whether it's just the hype coming in in general, I always see people uh, trying to get in. And like you mentioned, it doesn't really change anything about the company. So just keep that in mind. You know, I know everyone loves to buy on these stock splits and, you know, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But in the end, uh, definitely just look at the company's fundamentals. Hopefully Amazon just continues to do well for the longer term, because I'll tell you what, Mike, having shares at a hundred and something dollars sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. Alrighty, so I just want to say, uh, guys, if you're new here, consider subscribing. We post multiple videos every single day. So yeah, if you like our videos, please consider subscribing to see them more often. And then I just want to give a giant shout out to our member of the day, Carlos M on YouTube. Thank you so much for all the awesome comments, Carlos. Tom and I really appreciate you. But Tom, do you have any final thoughts heading into tomorrow? Yeah, I'm really just looking at a lot of these plays that went up today, Mike. And, you know, there was some pretty good stocks that moved up. We actually had the oil sector doing pretty well. I know Zom had a pretty good day along with Chevron. So maybe we'll continue to see a nice rise out of the oil stocks. I know it's definitely been making for some pretty good uh, in and out day trade movement there. Even Oxy had a pretty decent move today. It's trying to break out above like $59 is definitely having some problems at that resistance there. But yeah, these are uh, the oil plays did good today, Mike. And then I'm also keeping my eye really on some of these safer, uh, slower moving value plays, kind of like Caterpillar. I know they were really ripping up this morning, Mike, and these plays have been really on fire. Walmart even had a great move today. So it was nice to see these slower movers starting to pop again. There we go. So let's get right into the momentum plays for tomorrow. With the first one, we have BABA -B -A to the downside. Yeah, poor Baba just got crushed today. Go ahead and make them break below $90.82, that low of day right there. Right. With the next one, we have DraftKings to the upside. Yeah, DraftKings actually had a pretty nice recovery. I would say if DraftKings could break above $18 tomorrow, it would make for a pretty nice pop. Right. And then with the next one, we have PLTR to the upside. Palantir, yeah, they actually had a pretty nice resistance yesterday, right around $12 even. Go ahead and make them break above 12. All right, so we are watching PLTR and DKNG for potential day trades to the upside tomorrow, only if they break above the levels Tom listed. And then we are watching BABA for a potential day trade to the downside tomorrow, only if it breaks below the level Tom listed. If you trade options, definitely check out that first link in the description and the comments down below. We have some awesome tools that you won't find anywhere else, and it's awesome if you trade options. So we have our hybrid bot here that calls out options day trades every single day. Over the past nine days, on average, each play popped for 30.6%, with the best play popping for over 82%. That was with VXX on March 1st. That play went from $133 up to $243 within a couple hours. So definitely check out that first link in the description and the comments down below. You get access to daily options, swing trades, day trades, a bunch of other channels, a great community. You can cancel at any time and we have a coupon running. So definitely check it out. We're always adding new channels. Tom has been on fire with some of his picks lately too. So definitely check it out. Besides that, if you liked today's video, please consider subscribing. And thank you guys so much for watching.